afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me for day seven of Love Your Lettering, 31 Days to Love Your Lettering. We're here for the afternoon session where we're going to be talking about faux calligraphy and faux typography. Good afternoon! <laughs> Sorry, if you guys have seen me on Instagram, you know that I am currently engaged in a battle for property on my desk. Um, so that's why I'm a couple minutes late. Hi, Cass. Um, so I have actually gotten boxes out and things are making their way into boxes, packing for moving. Oh, it's not done yet, Janet. I've got a long way to go. But I have actual... Um, space for this scope, which is a plus. Um, so, but I've got more work to do. Hopefully by the 9.30 session tonight, I'll actually have a clean desk. Hi, Lana. It's nice to meet you. Um, I'll just wait a minute while people are coming in. Hi, Jennifer. It's good to see you. You're starting, <laughs> thinking about starting. Yeah. Well, I had no choice because after I took that picture on Instagram, I spilt some of that water, which was such a bonehead move, but it was like an attack from the desk, a reminder that I needed to get it cleaned off. Hello. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, so those of you that might be joining for the first time, I'm currently going through 31 Days to Love Your Lettering, which is a series that I wrote in October of 2015. Um, all the posts are up on the blog. It's completely free to go through um, from my side of it. If you want to buy pens and things like that, there are links to suggested resources, um, but please don't feel obligated to get anything special. You can truly, st I'm going to show the links in just a couple minutes. Um, you can get started with whatever you have on hand. I do recommend graph paper, but if you don't have a graph paper notebook, just grab a stack of graph paper or print it off online. Um, you can start with any type of pen that's your favorite or just use a pencil. Um, don't let the supply list keep you from starting because I will show you ways to use your pens and pencils to, um, to kind of get started before you start investing in a bunch of pens that you're not sure that you're going to use. As you go throughout the series, you may find that one style of lettering really jumps out at you as something that you would like to learn or dive more into. And by all means, invest in a pen for that. But if you're just getting started, and that's what this series is all about, is just kind of introducing you to improving your handwriting and um, improving your handwriting and just getting your feet wet with creative lettering and a little bit of calligraphy. Um, yeah, you will use all of them. Anything that I've recommended is certainly a tool that I use and that I use frequently. I do not suggest things to you that I don't myself invest in. Um, that's kind of my commitment to quality. I don't ever want to tell you to go and buy something that I don't use. Cass, I love the grid, um, moleskines. They are definitely what's in my, um, excuse me, in my planner, and that's just kind of, I go for the dot grid and the squared grid. Those are my two favorites. Um, okay, so during this month, I am broadcasting at 2.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the same demonstration both times, um, except our afternoon one. As soon as I get started, we're going to flip into, like, demo mode. So I'm going to go through um, today's lesson without engaging in questions and answers during the demo because I'm looking to get that small portion of the instruction that I can move over for people that don't want to be part of the chat. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, so I'm not ignoring you. I totally am not ignoring you. Um, I will answer questions at the end after I've done the demonstration. If you prefer the chatty um, periscopes, which I do because that's my chance to get to know you guys as well, and that's kind of the fun of Periscope is that live interaction. Um, the 9.30 p.m. periscopes are definitely more chatty. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start my formal introduction, and then we'll kick into what today's lesson was. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. My name is Lisa. I blog at creatively.com, which is looking at life creatively. Huh, sorry. <laughs> We're currently going through my series, 31 Days to Love Your Lettering, and we are on day seven, which is faux calligraphy and faux typography. Um, we've gone through some basics. We took a look at our natural handwriting, and then we looked at ways of refining that, and we went back to very basic stick and ball print and old school um, cursive writing. And then we, um, we did some basic strokes that are part of every letter, and then we started to make some fun, and we did some altered letters and some whimsical letters, and today we're going to talk about faux calligraphy and faux typography. Lettering is 
all the rage right now between all the bullet journalers out there and the um and the Bible journalers, everyone wants to know how to improve their writing so that they can actually write in their own books because some people are afraid to write. They are not very happy with their handwriting and I think that handwriting is part of your legacy. So I'm not necessarily trying to teach you how to write like me. Um, that's not our goal here. Our goal is to improve your handwriting and hand lettering skills, to take some of the techniques that I can share and apply them to what your natural writing is and finding your own flair in that. Um, so with that said, we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera and I will show you a sample of what we're doing today and then I will show you the links in case you need to find me. Okay, so here's my sample from October series and what we're going to talk about is this faux, um, like, looking like brush or modern calligraphy, and then faux typography. Um, typography and lettering are not the same thing. Typography is the typeset, so when you're doing it by hand, it's definitely faux. Um, it's not, <laughs> you can't interchange the two exactly, although oftentimes you will see those terms interchanged. It's not really proper use of it. So that's what we're going to aim towards doing today. And if you would like to find out more about this series, you can find me at creatively.com. Go to slash love your lettering and it will bring you to all the information about this series. Um, finding me other places around the internet on Facebook slash creatively, um, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope. I use the same handle on those platforms. Pinterest, you can find me at creatively made. Um, I do have a penmanship and lettering board on there, and most of my periscopes are on catch.me slash creatively if you've missed anything and want to go back. Um, in the Love Your Lettering series, there are videos embedded into most of those posts, and those would be our demonstrations from the October series. But it's fairly similar, um, but those are definitely more chatty <laughs> because we were doing those kind of live as I was developing the series. So today we're going to go ahead and skip over into faux calligraphy and typography. And now my sample that's on the post for today does not include the full alphabet. And so I'm going to get to that kind of later on in this scope because I have, um, I have an offer for you guys. Maybe <laughs> it will help. Um, all right. So I showed you earlier this week a little lettering guide that I put together for Stone Soup for Five. And so I considered doing um, this portion in a bigger format for uh, to send out in a newsletter this week. I know that many of you are signed up for updates. And so I'm going to just reformat this into a fuller page so that you can see a full alphabet in um in what we're talking about today because I know lots of people have contacted me to say hey I need to see a full alphabet so I know which ones to make thick or thin or whatever so I'm gonna go ahead and make those to send out this weekend you guys can hold me accountable to getting that out if you are a subscriber you should see this in your email box by Sunday um, so there you go I have that so in the meantime today I'm going to demonstrate um, how to do this technique. So faux calligraphy, when I say that term, what I'm really meaning is kind of that modern calligraphy or brush lettering look, but doing it with a regular pen or pencil. Um, so I've got my, my grid here, and I'm going to write the word calligraphy. I'm using, um, here we go. This is the Zig Millennium pen, which is a pigment fine point pen, and I'm using the 05. Um, to do this. So I know we just went from print yesterday, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the calligraphy, the brush or cursive writing today. So I'm going to write that out just in plain cursive. And my hands are a little shaky because I've had far too much caffeine and far too little protein today. So please bear with me. So I'm not worried about getting these letters perfect because you'll see we're going to be adding some lines to this that'll fill in the blanks. And I'm holding my paper landscape just so that I have more room um, to show you on the screen. So there I've got just a cursive word um, out there. And now 
If you notice when I was writing, there are some strokes that go down and some that go up. And so now what I'm going to go back through is all those strokes or parts of the letter that I was going down on, I'm going to add an extra line to make that portion thicker. So it will mostly be the strokes that are more on the vertical angle. And you'll notice sometimes I'll make it broader on the outside and sometimes on the inside. And all I'm doing to determine which one I want is kind of taking a look at the counter space, making sure I'm still leaving enough room in that letter to make it nice and clearly legible. Okay. So, and a lot of those things just that comes, your eye for that will come the more you practice it. I don't think it's a hard and fast rule. So sometimes it, I may go over it twice if I think it needs to look a little bit thicker. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and add a little terminal on that Y. Okay, and a little tittle over the eye, and this G needs to be thicker too. Okay, so that would be the first step to doing the faux calligraphy, and then the next thing would be to color that in. So I'm still using the Micron. I would probably switch to a broader pen um, to go ahead and color it in a little faster. So there you have kind of taking your regular cursive and making it look like the faux brush calligraphy. So this works for big letters and it can also work for small letters as well. you will probably take more care in filling that in but I don't want to bore you with this step um, if I can demonstrate further on the technique so, so hopefully you can see what I mean by your vertical or down strokes are the ones that will be thickened and you're going to keep those upstrokes just as that nice thin hairline we refer it to. Um, there we go. I'll finish the G and then we'll move on. So you may want to take it slowly if you're doing this really big at the risk of hand cramps um, or use a broader pen to do your fill-ins there once you've got a good outline you can use a broader pen to fill it in so hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to do that method so again it's all these down strokes that are getting thickened okay and I kind of tapered it into the upstroke. All right, so now we're going to move to typography. So when you think typography, you think of like old school typesetting um, for the newspapers and book printing, things like that. Um, so I'm going to write out that word. And I'm just working at a size that I think would be easy for you all to see but certainly if it's more comfortable to start smaller feel free to do that so I'm starting with a very basic print
making sure that those bowls of the letters are nice and open. Okay, so now here I'm going to go back in and draw those broader lines as well. And again, I'm doing that on strokes that would be going down. This is not slanted. This is actually pretty straight up and down. You can do um, you can do it either way. That's where we're getting into creative lettering. Um, you can change the slope and the slant if you wish. Okay, I'm going to leave this stroke narrow, but I'm going to add the serif on the top, and I will add. A terminal on that on the H. I'm going to broaden that down stroke or the vertical and I'm going to add a serif to that. So I'm adding both the horizontal part of the serif and then I'm kind of curling it in. Because it just gives that, that typewriter look. I have these a little close together. And again, I'll take a look and see if it needs to be thicker or thinner. I'm going to go ahead and add a terminal to the R, but leave the arch thin. And if you didn't want to add that little curve on the on the serifs, you don't have to. I just like the way that looks. And again, I've come a little close. I thought I left plenty of space between them, but it looks like they're a little bit close. Adding a little terminal. getting it nice and smooth when you're thickening it might take a little time but that's okay this is just kind of one of those things where you just practice a little bit at a time uh, yeah I'll go back to that so. sometimes talking through it <laughs> makes me miss things but each time you step back from, like take your pen away from the paper, you kind of give it that glance over to see what you've missed. Because I miss things all the time. There's lots of times where I have to go back over a piece. Or you get through the whole thing and realize you forgot to completely write a letter in. And that's no fun. Okay, so my Y and my P are a little bit closer here than they should have been, so I'm going to go ahead and go on the inside of the Y to thicken that. Okay, and then my T, I'm going to bring that down, add a foot. And then I'm also going to add serifs on the end of the T. But I'm going to leave most of that horizontal stripe thin. So let's see. Looks pretty good. And then again, just going back in to color it in. So I don't mind so much that I have all these sketchy lines because this one I'm going to color in. Tomorrow we'll talk about adding color to these letters. And for that method, I will recommend starting in pencil. That way you don't have pen lines to contend with. Okay, so all my little sketchy doodle lines or doubled lines are going to get covered by the coloring in.
So, and if you've got kind of a rough edge there, you can always just go back over it a little bit to smooth it out. So now, with the calligraphy, I did kind of go at a slight slope or slant, you can see, um, and my cursive just naturally does have that slant. And for the typography, I pretty much stayed perpendicular to the baseline. Um, however, you can do this at an angle as well, and that was the sample, and you can do the faux calligraphy straight up and down. Um, let's see. Let's do a very kind of up and down cursive. But again, you would just thicken up those parts of the of the words or letters that you were kind of in that downward motion. Okay, so that would be kind of perpendicular to the baseline. Now, for this one, you could also go at an angle. And again, I would go ahead and color these in. Okay, so that was doing a little bit of a slope or slant. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not using a protractor or a specific guideline, but just doing. Um, my natural angle, something that's a comfortable um, angle for me. So there you have the demonstrations for today, our faux calligraphy and faux typography. And if you guys have questions or need to see something again, I would love to take your questions now. Thank you so much for bearing with me through the demonstrations. I do prefer the chatting with you guys, so thanks so much. Um, was there anything else that you needed to see? Um, so I will show you, um, this is, I'm, like I said, I'm going to do this typography. Typography is typesetting, so that would be um, what you're used to seeing for tr uh, old traditional print matter and things like that. So for this, this portion is what I'm going to rewrite for you guys in a bigger example. And it's just a sample of my cursive that's done in the faux brush and faux typography with the open downstrokes. Typography is is referring to printed matters, not by hand. When it's by hand, it's considered hand lettering. It's not typography. I don't know if that makes any sense, but like I said, this is just an introductory course and I don't want to get into all the hard and fast rules with you guys because I just want to teach you things that you can trans translate into the work that you do at home or your own um, correspondence and journaling and things like that. Someone wanted to see the capital J in cursive or in print. I can, I can do both. Okay, so let's start with print. It is going to go out in um, to my newsletter subscribers. 
if you have subscribed through um, the Love Your Lettering page, you will get a copy of that guide. Hopefully by the end of the month, my guide sheets will be ready. Um, and of course that would be a portion of the guide sheet. So that can be colored in. You can leave it straight or you can make those rounded in. And the cursive J. And it would be this portion that would be thickened. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> like I always say throughout this series is, um, you definitely don't want to compare um, because I've been doing lettering since middle school and I'm quite a bit older than middle school age so we're talking um, two decades of practicing and I practice all the time. Lot You guys have seen scratch paper from my desk um, all the time. <laughs> any, any chance I have to doodle letters I do. Um, okay. So there's a Q. Cass, did you want to see cursive or print? I assumed cursive, but... Okay. So there's a Q. Small word like fan in calligraphy. Yeah, I will certainly do that. And someone asked for an O. Um, okay, so a cursive O. I do like this, and a capital O would be just slightly different than this. It just would be bigger, and I would probably loop more on that way. And the typography one, with the O in print, I'm making those um, second lines on the inside. So you're creating more of an oval in the counter space and leaving the rounded on the outside of the letter. So let's do the word fan. Cursive S, lowercase or capital, although mine are both similar. Okay, so fan, I'm sorry, did you ask to see that in cursive or print? Okay, so let me just write. Um, so S, reminding my, okay, fan. So if I was doing a lowercase f, they're probably a little small and they're on the wrong feet. <laughs> they were on the wrong feet. There you have a little fan. <laughs> and you'll see mine aren't always completely smooth. Sometimes I have to go over a few times to get kind of the smoothness that I want and taper that in. And it just takes some practice. Okay. All right, so let's get an S. So a capital S. Um, there's a few different ways I like to do them. So I would thicken the spine of the S. You can do it this way, and that would be colored in. I just won't take a whole lot of time to do that. And I would add a terminal on there. You could start it down here and do it that way and again you want to thicken the spine or that downward portion of the S and I would add terminals on both of those spots and my lowercase s's tend to look very similar um, okay. so 
you get the idea that I would color that in because that's the area that you would make darker on the downstroke. Um, so the lowercase, I would usually be coming in from another letter and then I usually drop below the baseline and like connect to the next letter. Sorry, I missed that last comment. I'm so sorry. So this would be thickened and the upstroke would stay thin. Okay, I don't know. Does that help? So, because yeah, with the cursive, I'm connecting to the next letter and that connection will always be a hairline because that's an upstroke. Does that help with the S's a little bit? And S's are one that, like all of the letters, I really just think the more you play with them, you start to find the styles that you like. And you can kind of blend together techniques. And um, sometimes you go back to the traditional, and sometimes you add your own flair or mix in what looks to be a print letter, but kind of with a, a brush or modern flair. And someone wanted to see a D, a capital D in cursive. Um, so let's start with a downstroke, a loop, up, and then there. So I would probably put a terminal there and make this thicker because that was a clear downstroke. And this was an upstroke, and then this portion came down. There's that. Or you can you can do it like this. Where this became a downstroke. And that's just a matter of kind of the project that you're working on or your personal preference. And the more you play with your lettering, the more you'll find styles that you like. Any other questions on this technique? So, I'm going to get to work on those guides. You see every spot where you pick up the pen, how can you align it better? Um, so I'm assuming that you mean kind of like this right here. Um, that will, it, it gets better with time because you're going to start to get a feel for those letters more. But you can see just going over it again, it's, you know, slightly thicker than I would want my hairline to be, but it saves the letter without me having to start over again. Um, and just remember that you're not a computer, you're not a typewriter. Um, this is hand lettering, and so you're going to see what you've done when you draw the second line to thicken it. The lower stroke should be always on the right side. Um, it depends. Sometimes I'll do it on the left side if that's where I need to close up the space. If doing it on the outside is going to bring me too close to the next letter, then I may thicken it on the inside. I don't know if that is a better explanation. And that's just going to come from visual appeal. You'll start to see um, how you want your spacing to be. So yeah, like I can see where I drew the second line there and I can, you know, go back over and smooth that out. When you start out the basic letters, do you space them further apart? I would. Until you start to get the feel for where your broad strokes are going to go, give them more space than they need because this is just practice. Like this is a little too much space between these letters, but this is a practice piece and so, and this is too little space between. Um, but these are things that you'll start to correct um, as you as you practice more. And that's why most of my printable ones all start out with pencil. I frequently go over the layout to make sure that it's visually appealing. And a lot of that just comes with time and practice. Um, because it is, it's, you know, it's a skill and it's an art. And it's one that you'll kind of learn the more that you do it. The more you practice it, the more your eyes are trained to find the areas that need to be improved upon. So I'll give you another minute if you have questions that you're typing in. Um, if I've ended the broadcast and you did not have a question answered, you can always send me a message. You don't know how to make the letters, but you can copy. Yeah, the more you practice, you'll you'll do it. And um, there are lots of basic um, 
letter guides that you can probably find for free. Um, I have done, I'm like I said, I will put out the faux typography alphabet and a faux brush lettering alphabet that will go out in my newsletter. Um, you can sign up on this page. Um, and that those should go out this weekend. I am working on a full ebook to go with these lessons, but really my goal when I wrote this series was to get you just writing with your natural lettering, not necessarily copying um, mine, because I think that you'll develop your style through it. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for being here this afternoon. I look forward to um, to seeing you this evening or tomorrow. And tomorrow, our topic is adding color to the faux letters. Um, so you're going to need a fine line pencil. I'm sorry, a fine line pen and a probably a pencil to start with and any type of colored pencils that you'd like. Um, when will I post the book? I am still working on all the guide sheets, so hopefully by the end of March, but I am, I, we'll see. We're moving the end of March also, so it's kind of hard to commit. So this is tomorrow's topic, and if you need to find me off of Periscope, here's places you can find me. I look forward to chatting with you more tonight and tomorrow. Bye-bye.